Hi, I'm Andrew Brown, Senior Director in Advanced Analytics at CIBC. We're part of the Data and Analytics Group at CIBC, and within our team, we have groups that maintain our central client data resources, provide enterprise business intelligence platforms, and also deliver analytic support to business groups across the organization. Depending on the business need, this can range from providing reporting, data analysis, visualization, and dashboards, to building and delivering predictive machine learning models. As part of the advanced analytics team, we will work with different businesses to understand their objectives, the data that they have available, and work closely with their subject matter experts to devise predictive modeling solutions. For today's talk, we'll present three recent projects. Kuhan Wang will talk about applying machine learning models to fraud monitoring. Lux Liu will describe an application of time series forecasting to cash management. And Ali Pesarangadur will describe applying NLP techniques to topic modeling and intent classification of client chat interactions. Hey, my name is Kuhan. Today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about um, fraud detection at using a machine learning at CIBC. So, one of the main uh, challenges of fraud detection at CIBC is the fact that CIBC, so CIBC is by way of background receives about a million retail account applications on a yearly basis. Um, and these applications are made across a number of products such as checking, saving, and lending, and it can come through a variety of channels such as online, telephone banking, or in branch. So we know from historical data that about 1% uh, or a bit less than 1% of these uh, turn out to be fraudulent. And uh, some examples of like um, what these kind of frauds are look, look like is one is the idea of a synthetic account. So a fraudster would take pieces of information from different real identities, such as uh, one person's name and another person's address. So in isolation, each piece of information looks to be um, to be to be accurate and real, but in in aggregate, um, it doesn't. Uh, it, it would uh, not make sense. Uh, another potential source of fraud is in compromised IDs. So if uh, somebody were to obtain the personal information of uh, a, another a legitimate customer or a person, they may then take out a lending product or apply for a lending product in their name and drain the account. So the way we tackle this problem in the last year is we uh, basically consist of two steps. So the first step is basically to build a single flattened view of, a, of an application at the time um, that the application is made. Right, so we integrate several pieces of data from existing databases. Um, so obviously we have the actual account details. So we know the customer and the account information, which is what they're applying for, or perhaps uh, you know uh, from where they're applying. Um, we also have access if the customer is a existing customer of um, client of CIBC. We have access to their, to any potential information in the client database, so we can match them against their own individual profile. Um, thirdly, uh, if the application came through the online channel, then we can also obtain the metadata of the, of the session from CIBC.com in addition to such information such as geolocation or IP address of where the connection essentially came from. And we essentially join that up with a historical record of um, accounts that we know um, have turned out to be fraudulent over a period of time. And that lets us let's produce a training set, which is a single flattened view of applications, whereby the rows are applications and then the columns are various indicators and attributes of those applications. And a lot of the work in building machine learning model in a real life situation really just comes down to all the tricks and engineering nuances required to efficiently uh, build this uh, flattened normalized data set. So once you have that, um, it's possible to then sort of apply uh, a lot of the heavy machinery and machine learning to this problem to essentially look for a signal, right? So um, our model has over 10,000 features and in a single training data set, there could be potentially millions of rows of learning examples. 
So one of the most important things is to essentially scan the hyperparameter space of the model in a rapid and efficient manner um, to discover where are the, the, the optimal uh, data, no, hyperparameter points essentially, right? So we take advantage of GPU computing to do this. So the model that we um, rely on is XGBoost and um, GPU computing is well supported in XGBoost. So on the left here, you are essentially what you're seeing is 10,000 hyperparameter, 10,000 trials for um, two different hyperparameters of XGBoost. So we are looking at Lambda and Alpha. Um, and then we're basically scanning them. And then the color scale is essentially looking at um, a metric of uh, model performance, right? So towards red is better and towards blue is uh, worse. So there's essentially you know, different combinations of hyperparameters that would produce very similar results. Uh, and then the second thing is that uh, for sort of um, a model that affects retail customers like this, it's very important that the model be transparent and interpretable. So nowadays we're able to take advantage of Shapley values to effectively uh, provide a interpretation or essential or at least transparency towards the model. So we know how each feature affects the final score that a single applicant um, application receives from the model. So here I show a result where the application received a score essentially 0 0.999, so essentially very suspicious. Um, we've uh, redacted the actual feature names, but this would be essentially a scorecard that we would produce um, basically to indicate the 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 Shapley values where essentially we've ranked all the features by their absolute contribution to the final score, right? So towards the blue would be contributing towards suspicion and red would be contributing against suspicion. And this is the kind of the final product or output that a, a downstream analyst or a case monitoring system would receive. Um, so we've had some a fair bit of success in trial demos of this um, model, and we're now we're in a situation where we are essentially to uh, moving it into a production system. Thanks. Hello, everyone. This is Lux, a senior data scientist from Enterprise Advanced Analytics at CIBC. I'm going to talk about a use case I have been working on to forecast and optimize the ATM cash demand. Drawing cash from ATMs is one of the most common ways in which clients interact with their bank. This makes effective cash management a priority. Not keeping enough cash will result in clients' inconvenience and the bank will spend more time and more money in trips to reload ATMs. It is possible to get more cash in ATMs than what is needed. However, it has a financial cost to hold too much cash in the machines and banks cannot make profit using this idle cash. So it is important to develop advanced algorithms to accurately predict cash demand for ATMs. On the other hand, given the forecast, we may want to know how a more accurate forecast can improve our business. How does the forecast decrease the operating costs? And how much cash should be restocked? Optimization can provide a solution from predictive to prescriptive analytics. It can support business decisions to select restocking amounts to achieve cost reduction and operate, operational efficiency. The full model is described here. Basically, we split the two-year history of the dispense data. Uh, we built the forecast model, use data from the first 21 months. And then we create a seven-day rolling forecast for the cash demand per denomination per ATM for each day in a testing period. Why do we choose the seven-day forecast window? 
uh, because ATMs are scheduled for reloads at regular intervals, typically once a week. So in this case, we choose seven day forecast window in our analysis. Uh, with the forecasted demands and the business settings, we then plan for each future day until the next scheduled reload day. The business has some high level policies or settings such as ATM cash capacity, how much cash can an ATM hold in the cassette, lag time between reload decisions and reload and so on. The weekly forecast demand combined with the business settings are fed into our optimizer to generate the optimal restocking amount in terms of uh, minimizing the operational cost. When we actually observe the true, amount, true demand at the end of the day, we will send it to the model to update the starting balance and generate restocking for the next day. So for back testing and comparison, the simulated results are compared to the ground truth to evaluate the stocking decisions. Here are some results of multi-denominational forecast on a selected machine, which dispenses 20, 50, and 100 denominations. We see the forecast model could, for, uh, could capture the peaks somehow and fit the trend. The shaded part here is the arrow bars on the forecast. The performance of 100 denomination is a bit degraded uh, because this ATM did not dispense 100 denomination from the beginning of the data time window. 100 denomination was added later and we only have a couple of months data available. Compared with the existing native system, our forecasts are improved the mean percentage error declined for each denomination. Additionally, optimization provides a tool to optimize the trade-off between the risk of cash outages and the cost of holding excess cash in ATMs. The simulated backtest shows the potential cost savings in terms of number of cash reloads and cash usage. Thank you, and please let me know if you have any questions. Hello everyone, I'm Ali Fesaran Khader, a senior research scientist at CIBC, and today I'm going to talk about representation learning and topic analysis, and also quickly cover a related project for this talk. We know that machines can only process numeric values but how does a machine understand a concept, or if we make it simpler, how does a machine understand a color? For example, if we pick color navy, a machine translates that color to a numeric representation or a binary code that will be used later on. Having that said, can we do something similar with words or text? The answer is yes. We can train natural language processing algorithms to map words to vectors of numeric values. Those vectors are also known as word embeddings in literature. Machines can then use those embeddings to understand a piece of text. A scriptgram or word to vec is one of those algorithms. It pushes related or similar terms into different subregions in a latent space. Next, I'm going to show you how we use word to vect for a related project at CIBC. For this project, we were given 11 predefined intents or topics, uh, coming with some utterances examples, and we were also given a corpus of chat transcripts. And the task was about assigning an intent or topic to every chat transcript. 
For achieving that, we took the following steps. We cleaned transcripts and utterances, tagged punctuations, links, and postal codes, and removed stop words. We found bigrams and trigrams using vector-based models and masked them in the transcripts and utterances. Then we created word to vec embeddings using FastX library and calculated average word embeddings for each transcript and topic, where an average word embedding is the average of all words embeddings within a phrase. Finally, we calculated cosine similarity between a transcript and topic's average word embeddings and assigned the topic with the highest score to that transcript. For instance, on the right side, we see an example where the topic cancel and e transfer was assigned to a given chat. As the first highlighted line says, no problem, the e transfer was not sent to an account, you should still be able to cancel the e transfer. Finally, we created and deploy an interactive application for this project. As you see, we can select a chat and observe the top three most important sentences for the topic assignment. Feel free to let us know if you have any questions and we will be glad to answer them at the Canadian AI conference. Thank you very much.